Welcome gamers to Super Beard Bowl Season 2. Each month, we're doing an all new 8 episode series complete with a beginning and an end as voted on by you, our loyal viewers. Without paying a single penny, everyone who watches will be able to vote on one of four show ideas and once you narrow it down from four to two, the Beard Bowl Patreon tier will then choose between the top two for which show gets made into a full eight episode series. This month, the winning series is... Well, we just we just picked a bunch of games we like to relax to. And uh, we're going to play those games and answer questions from you guys. <clears throat> just sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, welcome back to another week, another game, uh, Comfort Games on Effort Beard Bowl. Yeah. You're here. Effort Beard Bowl? Beard Bowl? Just Beard Bowl. No, e I everything Beard Bros. <laughs> I'm, I'm real. I am real. Effort is like, Effort and the fact that this is called Beard Bowl, like, fucked me up forever. I'm never going to get it, these right. Effort Beard Bowl? <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to get these right again. Uh, you got Alex, Brett, and Gerard. Hi. What's good? Uh, also, Ted is here. Hi. Ted, uh, friend of the hi. pod. Yeah, friend of the pod, Ted. Uh, we're playing We're playing GT GT Look, Sport. At this point, I just say pod just to get a reaction to the bread. <laughs> you know, if you say pod, like, that's a word, right? Like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but friend of the pod is like, that just means that, like, I can't be bothered to say that last syllable. Let's move it's on. True, like, that's true. Fucking ew, dude. Yeah, you just fucking say it, dude. It's just one uh, more syllable. Eat a dick. Yeah, uh, people have fun. You know, it's a flourish. Yeah, friend. Uh, like, put it this way. They could have said pod friend, and I would have felt better, because that's more efficient than friend of the pod. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah what yeah, if yeah. I just want to call you, what if I just want to call Gerard Jur? Uh, once again, I get that. Sometimes nicknames are like, um... Uh, natural that just happen, you know? Yeah. But friend of the pod is like, eat a dick. Hey, speaking of eating dicks, it's Gran Turismo. Guys, Gran Turismo Sport is my comfort game. I love this game. Uh, I love all the Gran Turismo games. I love driving games in general. I'm not very good at them uh, because I, I barely get a chance to play them. But what I do love to do is to just go in by myself and like race around the track. Uh, which is what I'm going to do right now. And I've just slowly been getting gold medals, uh, learning how to drive uh, again, getting ready for the new <laughs> PS5 version. But I just love So when this. you say by yourself, you mean like not online? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, the sport game is like much more of an online game than the rest of the Gran Turismos P uh, that have been out there. P high What's represent that? P high representing Italy all the way down in 10th place. Heaven's Floss representing United States coming up in the back. The man in the pink suit. A uh, strange man who uh, insists oh. on having both of his names have no space between them. Strange custom. Yeah, he, but I don't know. There's something. There's something really calming about driving because it really is not easy, like to 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 win in these games. Like, are you not going to drive? I'm not that good at the game, no. But the, I mean, I get good at it when I play. I haven't I haven't played it in like uh, you know like a like a month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but like. When I get into it, it's like a peace zone for me, right? Like, mm. I obviously wish I had like a uh, like a wheel or something where I could like really immerse myself in that way. All right, I think chat. That's All right, YouTube, you heard him. Get Fasciani a wheel. Yep, send it to the PO box. The uh, PO box, and I will have it in my house. Which, by um, the way, we have a PO box that we never promote on this channel. Ted, put it on screen. That's the P.O. Box. Send us stuff. It, we love you. Is it separate? It's the same P.O. Box, It's right? the same P.O. Box. We, we Since we moved to the new office, Brett, Couch Fighters, and uh, Weekend Warriors have literally shouted out the P.O. Box more times than than both Completionist and Beard Bros have. So That's we, true. Have, we have a P.O. Box. Uh, send us stuff. We love you. We love to feature it. Someone sent us some, some Game Boy Advances. Each of us are personalized. Oh, my God. Those are They're incredible. at the office. They're pretty sick. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, I took you. mine home. I, I I took mine home. It's a Dragon Quest uh, one, I which play is Final Fantasy awesome. Tactics. So. Oh my god, I haven't played that game in so long. Um, but yeah, there, there's something about driving games that I think is like really powerful, uh, which is that they they like really are a good way to get into the flow state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, granted, this isn't like the exact. Uh, 
scenario that you want, right? Like you don't want to be like in a conversation with three dudes, like while you're trying to like collapse into the flow state. But I just wanted to show you guys because it's it's really like it really brings me peace, and it's a it's a skill that like translates pretty well. Like a lot of drivers uh, who start on the GT circuit eventually end up in the real GT circuit uh, with the uh, RIAA, which is like pretty crazy. You're just saying uh, letters. And, I don't know what the fuck this shit means. Like, they go pro off of what they learned in Gran Turismo. Like, they'll get a job on a mm. team, on a racing team, and will do as well as the real racers on the real tracks. Mm. I have Which heard is, of this. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Oh, my God. Uh, and I like Gran Turismo because it's it's really high fidelity. It's not, like, arcadey at all, really. And even online, like, they schedule the races, so you have to, like, sign up for specific races. Uh, which is really awesome. Like, they're happening all the time, right? But, like, you know, sometimes you wait, like, five, ten minutes for your race to start, uh, which is crazy. Pass this, man. It's, you know, it's hard, because that's the thing I was going to say, is part of the part of the thing that this game does is there's, like, a sportsmanship element. So you can't just, like, I have to, like, find a time when I can pass him where I'm not going to, like, like, hit him or touch him, because sure. I'll lose points uh, if I touch him. Mm-hmm. Cause that's, I feel like that's how most people play through like a game like this is they'll just like start to use physics to like angle their selves around people without learning how to like properly drive. And that's why I like to sit inside the, uh, inside the car like this is because, uh, I just like to immerse myself in the idea that I'm actually operating the vehicle. I think mm -hmm. if I had the wheel, I would like zoom out to just the, like the mo like without the, the wheel in the, sh in the shot. Mm-hmm. But I like the wheel because it reminds me that the way that I'm controlling it with a controller is not, like, necessarily accurate to, like, what the input means that I'm putting in, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. L like, like, the wheel always is turned, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you have to, like, think about, you have to think about that it turns your wheels, you know? It's not just, like, controlling a character in another game. I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I enjoy it, and uh, I will re I will win this race. Mark my words. I just need to remember how to drive this car again. Um, but yeah, I play with no music even when we're not recording because I just like to play my own music and do this in the morning for like an hour sometimes to get my brain working. Just feels great. Runs really good on the PS5. Uh, but enough about this game. Uh, if you like it, try it. But uh, it's really it's really cheap. But uh, Ted, let's Ted, let's go. Ted, let's, give us some questions. questions. Yeah, questions, please. Okay, this is uh, from Zarek. They want to know, hey all, what's your favorite way to de-stress? Mm. Reading. Ooh. Yeah. Easy, easy. Uh, My routine. For me, it's podcasts. Hmm. Give hey, me your top it's... three. What are the what are top three that you listen to nowadays? Uh, Reply All. Mm hmm. Listen to that one quite often. Radio Lab. I'm Sruthi Pinamanini. <laughs> and uh, and uh, let's go to court. Which is uh, Norm's wife's. I shouldn't say that. I should say uh, Kristen Caruso's husband's. Oh uh, shit! Or rather, or rather, Kristen Caruso. <laughs> Kristen uh, Caruso's her, husband's wife's podcast. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Kristen Caruso's Norm's, husband's wife's. Norm's wife. No, hold on. Uh, Kristen Caruso's <laughs> incredible husband. Norm's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen Caruso's incredible husband, Norm's incredible wife, Kristen Caruso. Got it. There we go. We fixed it. Yeah, it's like it's like my favorite murder, but about court cases. It's great. Yeah. My, her, my her, perfect her, friend of the podcast. Got it. My <laughs> FOP. FOP. Yeah. I'm down with FOP. Are right, you know me? Still God, same old G. Down with the FOP. Yeah. But uh, what about you, Foss? Is it reading? Uh, relaxing for me is all about my routine. Being mm. able to do things like make myself breakfast and like clean the house and stuff like that. Sometimes like when I have to do chores, I get stressed out by it. But like when I'm at home alone, which is guys, literally all the time, I feel like I'm Ryan Gosling's hologram wife from Blade Runner. <laughs> like I am. I'm just home all the time. Mm. Uh, like I just I like to like make my little coffee with my Chemex pour over because it takes like 10 minutes to make the coffee and it's like a very hands on thing or, or I'll or I'll I have like a very specific way I like to make myself a little bacon toast or sandwich. 
you know, or I do things like this where I just play a game that's that's not that doesn't make me salty and just like do my best. Good question. Oh, I'm put, putting in my workout today. Daily workout on GT. If you do 26.2 <laughs> miles, you get a, a free car. Wow. Uh, but yeah, like I, I really I really like I really think that for me, like I, I talk about this all the time on uh, another podcast that I don't have enough time to do all the time. Uh, nonprofit uh, that I do with Satchel, which is like we talk about just like how it is to be alive right now and what it's like later to be going to be to be alive. And one thing that I noticed, right, is that like if you think about like cowboys and which and I do all the time, just just people in America who were here a long time ago, right? Like, like they did, like exercise didn't exist for them. For example, I always use the example of exercise because it's a really clear example. Yeah, Back uh, to the Future 3 nailed it when they were like, so what do people do? It's like, you mean people run for fun in the future? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because in cowboy times, if you want to eat food, you're going to have to bust your ass. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're going to bust your body to, like, not die, right? right like, right. all day, every day. And I feel like as modern society gets easier and easier to exist in, mm -hmm. you know, we get so separated from those things that like make us human, like things that satisfy us. And so anytime that I can figure out a way to work exercise into my routine or I can like, oh, I need to go get like bread. Oh, I'll walk all the way down to the fucking market on the same street as me and get some bread for mm. today only. Like th that type of shit makes me feel so much better. Uh, and it's a lot easier for me to like get exercise that way than being like, all right, well, I'm going to put on, I'm going to sit on this fake bike. That's not going to take me anywhere for an hour and just like get gross in my bedroom. Like it just doesn't, it's not as motivating to me, uh, to like live life that way. And so mm -hmm. things like my routine, making coffee and things like that, it's just, it's just a version of that, that I'm, I'm just trying to get back to that sort of like harmony with the real world vibe. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. That's like the source of my anxiety is like stuff that doesn't make sense that we all have to do all the time. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Getting those turns down. You see that? This car is like extremely powerful. I also find that racing, like when you, especially when you're playing Gran Turismo, like the, the thing about racing that people don't realize is that you don't really feel like you're going that fast all the time, and a lot of the time, you're not going that fast. Like, you just have to, like, drive well. It's weird. I like it. Uh, we got another question? Yeah, Steven Conover asks, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Nothing. Mm. I would. I literally would do nothing. I don't want. I don't want it. It's fine. What? I'm not. What? I'm not like. I don't need a Klondike bar right now. Why not? Feeling, oh shit! This sounds like PTSD. What happened to you? Nothing. I just. <laughs> they're readily. They're, they're readily available. Anyone can get one. I would walk to the Seven Eleven. Yeah, this sounds like you're talking to yourself and not me. Like it sounds like. No, I learned my lesson. I can just. Nobody go needs to the store a Klondike, Klondike bar. bar. Nothing's worth it. No, I, I guess what I mean to Ooh. say is that everyone's always like. The meme of like, what would you do for Klondike bar? Because that's like what the commercial was and all that stuff. It's like I would just go to the store and buy one if I wanted one. Yeah, that's real. They are readily available. They're not like hard to get, and they're not, you know, there's they're not like a thousand of them. So you're absolutely right. That being if said, would I would definitely sell Gerard into slavery for a Klondike bar. Oh <laughs> damn! I accept. All you right. know what I miss? <laughs> Fuck a Klondike bar. I miss mm. the Mickey Mouse ice cream. What does that I'm taste sure. like? It's that hard. It's that hard <laughs> chocolate shell. That the inedible thick boy. shit. No, you bite it and it like, like there's like it's like a chocolate bar with fucking ice cream inside. It's fucking awesome. You're, you're talking mm. like those 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 Haagen Dazs type bars, right? That are on the wooden stick. At yeah, at Disneyland they sell mm -hmm. an ice cream that's mm. just like a chocolate Mickey head. Mm. That shit is the best ice cream thing like that that exists. Man, fuck a Magnum, I, fuck a Klondike I, bar. Mickey. You you just saying that makes me realize that Amanda and I go to Disneyland all the time, just the two of us. It's like our thing. Mm -hmm. We we haven't gone, and it's kind of weird. It yeah. feels very, very weird. Well, the good news is you're going to be able to go get your shot there eventually. It's going to become it's, a super it's true. It's true. Welcome to the vaccine center. Uh -huh. 
What if you huh. go in there to get your vaccine and it's like goofy in a doctor's outfit? Would you still t- would you still get it? <laughs> I think there's a lot of people out there who would only accept the vaccine from Goofy. They trust him more than they trust fucking doctors and shit. That's true. And they're like Ooh, they're like Fauci, yeah. give me Goofy. Yeah. <laughs> also, the story. Get me uh get me doctor get me Doctor Fauci voiced by Goofy. <laughs> Gorsh, Gorsh, I'm Doctor Fauci. Gosh, 4,450,000 deaths. <laughs> and it's climbing. <laughs> climbing. Maxie, get over here and help me with this. Maxie. <laughs> Loading bodies since I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I still forgot. That's what we live I, st- I still forgot that Goofy Movie has songs in it, and I just watched it. After today, no one will take the vaccine. After Damn. today, it's a hoax. <laughs> Fucking That's why they're called goofs is because they don't believe in <laughs> vaccine. You are you are vaccinated, right? Oh, yeah, of course I am. What do you mean, Roxanne? I'm just, of course, I've been vaccinated all the time. I'm going to get vaccinated right now. What? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I just look, I uh I'm actually going to the Capitol to uh, have, be give a speech with Dr. Fauci this weekend. Reject the the vax. Goof. <laughs> I'm telling you, goof. <laughs> skip, skip the vax, goof. Check his <laughs> antibodies, goof. <laughs> oh, oh, <Damn> goof. <laughs> I love this. All right, <laughs> uh, next question. This oh, is gonna get. Gonna this, it's, okay. it's gonna get. It's, it's gonna get darker and darker as we go on. I don't know if it get darker than loading bodies, but okay. No, no man. <laughs> here's a uh, here's a random oh here's a random beer bros, or a random fact that none of you guys knew. Uh, it was kind of sad. Um, you know, last to give you guys an, an idea, last week we had the, the the huge incident at the Capitol take place. Um, on our side, we were affected by it a little bit in the sense that uh, we were going to film for Uncharted. A national treasure parody in which <laughs> Ted and I break into the Library of Congress to uh, play Uncharted 4. And uh, we nix that shit right away. But uh, mm. just know that Ted gave one of the best performances I've ever seen anyone in anything give. You got to release and that uh, eventually, dude. On the Blu-ray, it'll yeah. be there. It, on the Blu-ray that'll never come out, it'll be there. That's amazing. I didn't know that that's why that didn't happen. Yes. You guys think but about it makes outfit. sense now. It's a great outfit. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it is. All right. Next question. Sorry. Uh, that guy Edley asks question for the bros and anyone else, mm-hmm. including Ted. Yeah. If you could forget one game and or movie and experience oh. it for the very first time again, oh. what would you choose? Thanks for the awesome content, guys. Oh Jesus. That's so uh, hard to answer because like. Let me just give you an example, right? Because my knee-jerk reaction was like The Matrix, right? Ooh. <clears throat> but we're living in a post-Matrix world. We're living in a world that has been irrevocably shaped and molded by the influence of that film. And I'm wondering if I forgot about that movie completely. Mm. Would it have as hard as an impact on me, considering mm-hmm. that I live in a world that has been shaped by it already? Um, my mm. hypothesis is no. I'm sure I would still be impacted by it somehow. You'd probably be all pissed because you like still remember playing Enter the Matrix, which is like <laughs> not the way to That's experience why I gotta that choose story. Both of those, so I forget both yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but do you, you you feel what I'm saying, right? Like it's a uh, yeah, absolutely. I, it makes me nervous to choose something like that so far back because the Matrix is 20 years old. Uh, yeah, it's kind of got to be recent, I think, to like yeah. really like yeah yeah. Otherwise, it might just it might not hit like that. The things that came to mind for me are both very recent. Okay, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Uh, for me, uh, the game obviously is Dragon Quest XI. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great video game, number one, and number two, it made me so happy because I was waiting for a Dragon Quest for like years, right? Like Dragon Quest X was an MMO that didn't come out in the West, and Dragon Quest IX came out when the DS was still around. So, just to give you an idea of how long it's been since I got an entry in my favorite game series, right? Uh, and it was so good, and it made me so happy that I just wish that I could, like, play 120 hours of it again. I actually played it for about 300 hours, all told. 
Uh, but I I wish I could just go back and do that. And then for the movie, just because it was such a pleasant surprise mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting anything and it was just absolutely blown away, mm. I'm going to go with Mad Max Fury Road. Mm, 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 Interesting. Mm. I feel you. I would yeah. love to just walk yeah. into a theater and be blown away at that level again. Yeah. Oh, you know what I want to watch again? Mm. Creed. Oh, man. Oh, Creed that was movie, so good. That movie, like, what the fuck? That movie should not be good. Why not? You just... You just like wouldn't expect like something that's like a weird like after the fact cat it's like Blade Runner 2049 mm. like I didn't know I, I had no thought that that movie was going to be excellent and it turned out to be excellent because now we're in the post like sequel world of like where sequels are just bad cash grabs all the time like mm. now there's like art sequels which is like so crazy to me interesting same thing with Mad Max honestly yeah I just it's just Creed is a perfect little story dude and and that's so it's so one of the, one of the things that makes me saddest in my life is that I can't find art on a regular basis that gives me what I want and makes me feel the way the ways I want to feel it's so fleeting it's so rare it's definitely like out there if you like want to dedicate your life to it but yeah like it's not definitely not like the mainstream art is like one after another find. the great like, I've been the great looking movies for years it's not easy and i wish I could get more. And um, Creed was just one of those that, you know, I was hoping, like, I didn't go to see that movie because I thought, like, this is going to be excellent. I went to see it because right. I'm like, fucking baby, baby Apollo. OK, I'm interested. And I walked out being like, wow, you know, I really just appreciated that they went so like, like, like low, low key with the movie. You know what I mean? Like in the way that Rocky is just like a very straightforward story about like a dude learning how to box. Uh, you know, like I just feel like that, that, like it's so cool that Creed is like that. Huh. All right. All right. Like you'd think they would like bank on the Rockiness more, but they'd like didn't. It's just like a tight other movie about boxing. Hmm. Small yeah, skills. Creed 2 is is all right. It doesn't quite um hit and feel the same way the first one does but it's it's pretty it's pretty okay it's like a i'd say it's it's an okay sequel but i i was expecting a lot more considering how good the first creed film was so so just executed i think mm. i'm like a sucker for boxing movies in general mm. i fucking loved the hillary swank one where she hits her head what the fuck is that called <laughs> million, million dollar, dollar baby. baby yeah god damn that movie was good never saw that one from back before Clint Eastwood like lost his mind I think he already lost his mind at that point just, we just didn't know it the you thing that blew my mind dude yeah, at dude. the end of that movie when he like dies and then like the, the credits go and it's him singing Gran Torino the theme song of the movie like I was like what did I just watch um so for my for my game uh oh fuck I'm, I'm gonna give like a, a like a all-time favorite game that I'd love I'd love to re-experience and then like a more recent one if I had to re-experience a game all over again uh, it would probably be Final Fantasy 7 remake because I mm -hmm. love that so much mm -hmm. or Mario Odyssey both those mm -hmm. games oh, just, mm. just both those games just like rocked me to my core with how much I loved them um, and we're talking Bowser's Fury look by the way oh I'm so excited for Bowser's Fury yeah uh Mario Super Mario 3D World. We've been wanting to do a, a, a let's play of that on the show for a long time here, uh, but uh, we we knew there was going to be some type of of uh, switch of switch port, so we've been waiting. But um, if you guys want to see it, let us know. Uh, I have to do a new, <sighs> for new game plus, anyways. I'm going to be streaming that when that comes out. But uh, yeah, uh, Odyssey and FF7 remake. And then if I had to pick like, an older game, it probably would be. <sighs> It probably would be Donkey Kong Country 2. That game mm. just like I was so obsessed with it and it's it's just the music is so good. Like man, it was I was at the perfect age for this difficult platformer and I I, I was absolutely obsessed with it. And uh it's just it's so much more spooky and and, and methodically planned out than than the first game. Um I always, I always see all these hot take threads of people throwing me under a bus because they're like DKC2 isn't that good or first one's the best one and it's like 
All right, that's fine. That's a fine opinion to have, but you don't need to, uh... You don't need to stomp on my head for it. I don't care. <laughs> have, right. you, have your opinion. Leave me alone. Um... You know, your, your Nintendo choices remind me of another good game. I think that deserves... Not deserves, but be nice to erase from our memories to experience again is Breath of the Wild. I think that'd be nice. Dude, what, oh my what, god. What a game. What a game. Had no expectations for that game either, and it just blew me the fuck away. Mm-hmm. Um, should I take the race again, or will we see you guys next time? Yeah, we're out of time. We'll see you next time. We're out of time. This is going to be another episode of this. <clears throat> yeah, I for would, sure. I would love to rewatch for the first time Jurassic Park, oh, Pirates of the mm-hmm. Caribbean, oh. and Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Oh, my God. Uh, in cinema. All in cinema. Yeah. Sure, sure. Oh, it has to be in cinema. I was for Watch film- the extended uh, first uh, Lord of the Rings is like very surprisingly different and good. Uh, for yeah. film, for films, I'd probably say Shaun of the Dead and uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I'd love to, oh, man. to yeah. re-experience oh, those dude. movies again. You're, World yeah, tense. you're killing it. Like, yeah, like, you're absolutely right. When it comes to, like, great storytelling, yeah, like, that's why... <laughs> like, it's hard... Let me put it this way. Despite how good and how funny the Cornetto Trilogy is or... or or fucking Venture Brothers or Arrested Development. I don't <laughs> laugh that often at them anymore because I've seen them nine times. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, fucking comedy comes from the unexpected a lot, like the vast majority of the time. There needs to be an element of surprise there. Yeah. Uh, but but the reason those things are so good is because they're so dense and rich that there's still a lot of enjoyment you can get, even if you're not laughing out loud still. Uh, but if you could, like, remove your memories so that the surprise is back. Wow. Yeah, you imagine? Arrested Development one time through with no knowledge of the jokes. Could you imagine? So, yeah. Dude, that, was me, that, that was me a couple of years ago, and I loved it. It was such... I was <laughs> I, I was blown away. Even when we got to the weird seasons, like, I loved every minute of it. It was so good. You should so watch... you're saying uh, you had never seen it until a few years ago? Is that what you're saying? Yep. I see. Yeah. Well, what you made should watch you do it? The Venture Brothers next. Oh, I've seen Venture Brothers. Oh. Well, what was that, Brett? No. <laughs> I was going to ask what made you finally watch Arrested Development, but now I'm curious as to uh, the fact that you weren't that impressed by Venture Brothers. Oh, it's not that I wasn't impressed. It's that I I, uh, I, I had watched it. I, I loved it. I watched it when it when it came out uh, on Adult Swim when I was in college. Like it's, it was also on my TV on Sundays. Um, yeah, but have you seen, like, all of it? Uh, admittedly, no. I've only seen the first season, I think. First oh, dude! Or two. Yeah, you're not even okay. And gotcha. I need, I need, I need to re, I need to like really jump back in. I would um, say it's good right away, but like once they realized that it was going to actually be a show, it got like three times as good. Uh, last thing, don't forget about Spaced. Everybody, go watch Spaced as well because it's an yeah. incredible series. Spaced is my great. mom just got Brit Box, so I got Red Dwarf on me too. Mm. Uh, this basically became us recommending shit to you guys, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, who cares? Fuck what's it. The, what's tight. the problem? What's the problem? Not a, no problem, sir. No problem. Please do not sell me into <laughs> slavery. I don't want that. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. What's no. the problem? Uh, right, next guys. time, more Gran Turismo, then, huh? You better believe it. All right. Thanks Peace for out. watching, y'all. Bye bye. So here we are once again. Bearded men have reached the end. Well, I don't know what comes next. All I know is you made it this far. This is your end time. See you next episode. Hope you enjoy the show. S U P E R. Beer Bros.